A Life of Bliss. Being a biographical series about bachelor bliss with Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as Tony Fellows, Muriel Pavlow as Tina Holliday, and George Cole as the shy young bachelor himself, David Alexander Bliss. <laughs> what does Bliss want out of life? A somewhat desperate excuse for having my usual chat with him a day or so ago. You know something? Your excuses are getting weaker every week. My uh, excuses for calling round in the hope of tripping me up. I know that's what you were up to all along. I underestimated your intelligence. I know, and that's not easy to do. <laughs> what do you want out of life, though, David? Well, I've got everything I want now. You're happy, as they say, with your lot? Good gracious, are they still saying that? <laughs> your lot, of course, including... Um... Hello, here it comes. The inevitable question about my girlfriend calculated to embarrass. You don't have to answer it if you... No, it's OK. I'm getting used to it. Yes, my lot includes Tina. She's here now, in the kitchen, talking to my sister. She's a very positive character. She's got a wonderfully warm personality. She's strikingly attractive... And when I'm with her, my cup, as they also say, is full. All of which proves that I'm no longer embarrassed by that sort of question. And that from now on, you're going to find it very difficult. Difficult? If you want to make me trip up. I should throw in the towel and admit defeat. Really, it... darling? Oh, sorry. Did I interrupt something? Me, raving on about you. Oh, and what were you saying? That you've got the sort of personality that makes me want to throw up. <laughs> um, that you're a, a difficult character when you're in your cups. A positive embarrassment when you're raving drunk. Yeah, I'll start again. But I slipped out before the resumption. Back to the present and over to the fellow's house to join David and Anne for Better the Dog. What time does the head of Marlow and Ridgeway's export department have to be at the office this time, Friday morning? The head of the export department is not going to the office for the next ten days. A holiday? Sort of. But you've only been working there two weeks. I know, but Mr. Marlow himself suggested I took the time off. To give him a chance to get over the strain. <laughs> The department's still non-operative. I thought you'd settled on the secretary. Yes, but she can't start till Monday week. And the only other people in my office are two decorators, neither of whom can type. I see. So I'm going to have you under my feet for ten days. And evenings. Tina's away for the weekend, working late all next week. I don't know what I'll do with myself. I may have a few suggestions. I may take Mrs. Massey at her word and go down there. Mrs. Massey? Yes, you remember. You and Tony were great friends of theirs. Then they... Moved down to the coast. About well, how long ago? Oh, ten years or more. Richard and Celia Massey. Well, she was up here visiting her mother. I bumped into her and she invited me down. It's funny, but do you know there were times when I envied Celia? Oh, envied her what? Richard, as a husband. Well, I shall forget you said that, I hope. Richard was always so gay. Well, Tony's been known to be gay in his time. When was this? <laughs> no, but seriously. Seriously? I wouldn't swap him for Richard. You're sure now? I'm sure. Well, I'm glad. Why? Is Richard available? No, I think she's still quite attached to him. I'm not surprised. He is terribly gay. Yeah, we've established that. Too much so for me sometimes. The heart. You to make the odd pass at me. He did what? Forget I said that, too. Made a pass at his best friend's wife? Well, that's traditional, surely. Oh, not in my book. Oh, come now. It can't still be Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's not Tennessee Williams' country, either. It was harmless enough. Honestly, Anne, I'm, I'm, well, I'm speechless. Tony will be down in a second. Sir? See, so you stay that way. Now you've got me worried. Now, that was another thing about Richard. He never let anything worry him. Well, neither does Tony. You don't believe that. Well, naturally. Then it is still Alice in Wonderland. He's a born worrier. He is. It's a good job he doesn't bite his nails. He'd be down to his shoulder blades. <laughs> Not that I mind, of course, only, well... What? It makes me feel so inadequate. I feel there ought to be some way of reassuring him, but... I just can't win. Why? If I say I'm sure he's worrying about nothing, I get accused of calling him neurotic. And if you don't say anything? He gets neurotic and says that I might as well tell him that he's got nothing to worry about. Oh, it's a tough old world. I live and learn. That's debatable. You're right. It's high time I left Alice in Wonderland and moved on to Freud. Let me know if you find the answer. Yeah, you know, I have noticed Tony hasn't been himself just lately. I know. But for once, he has got something to worry about. A business man? Completely dead, I gather. He could do with a complete break, too. Then I'd better go down and stay with the masses. The connection? Well, if a change is as good as a rest, a change from me ought to do him a power of good. Nonsense. As far as Tony's concerned, letting fly at you is a form of therapy. I found my niche at last, then. When a man's edgy, he needs an Aunt Sally. Odd, but I can't say I fancy the role. It's either you or me, or kick the dog, of course. <laughs> Psyche heard that. <laughs> and she doesn't fancy the idea of standing in for us. I say, I've just realised Tony's... Shh, careful. I think I heard. Oh, morning, Dad. Morning, Tony. <laughs> yeah, morning to you, too. How would you like your eggs this morning, darling? Surprise me. Raw should do it. <laughs> uh, David will pour out your coffee. 
I should get the office in good time today. Well, you're late now. I know, and with things as they are, that's a good time to get there. <laughs> Business is so quiet, my secretary's planted bulbs in the in tray. Then <laughs> it won't be long before everything's coming up tulips. <laughs> it's all very well for you to be so damn cheerful about it. I'm going through the worst period I've had in years. Yes, I know you are, Tony. Aunt and I were just talking about it. <laughs> Aunt and you? Oh, Sally and I. Yeah, I Adam. scarcely sat down. And you plunge straight into your well-known variation of name-dropping. I can't imagine why I said that. I had a guess because Anne said I use you as an Aunt Sally. Now, why would she say that? Then she hasn't. She knows perfectly well you wouldn't. <laughs> and Psyche doesn't fancy standing in for me, either. <laughs> you know, not... <laughs> so I was right. No. You, you like your coffee strong, don't you? I need it when you're around. I'm sure business will soon pick up. Another three months, that's all I'm going to give it. And then? Sell up and emigrate. You may think that now, Tony, but I wonder, Land, if you really would. <laughs> You've got to wonder if you would. Could you conceivably spare me the slips this morning? I've got enough trouble as it is. Yes, I know you have, Alice. Yeah, Only... uh, Aunt... <laughs> Aunt Sally and Alice in Wonderland in two minutes flat. What next, I wonder? Well, I should place a small bet on Tennessee Williams. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though, Freud. Freud? <laughs> well, Freud, business is slow all round, but it's bound to... Anne hasn't by any chance told you that I ought to see a psychiatrist. Well, of course not. I wouldn't put it past her. Well, you can take it from me. That's the one thing she didn't say. Ah, I think she did say all the rest. No. Uh, I know what Anne thinks, what she's always thought. That I worry over nothing. How about some more coffee? You haven't handed me my first cup yet. Oh, haven't I? Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's so full, too. Only... Oops. Oh, gosh. Food stays on toast, darling. Has David poured out your coffee? Yes, he has, as you can see. Stand up and I'll mop you down. I'll go upstairs and mop myself down. It'll give you a chance to think of an excuse of telling your half-wit brother that I'm in an advanced state of neurosis. I'd have every excuse if I was. I've got him living in the house. I've got a feeling I've failed as a form of therapy. I'm not going to say I could murder you. Thanks. Because I don't want to warn you in advance. Well, the words ran away with me. Not far enough. Oh, well, what's done's done, but in the circumstances... I'll phone Celia Massey and say I'd love to go down there. A breath of bracing sea air will tone you up. Blow all the cobwebs away. Not unless it's a gale force. <laughs> Might be at this time of year. Still, I'll be all right if I wrap up. A good thought, generally. <laughs> Did Celia say when you... Wait a minute. They've got a grown-up daughter. Pauline. Four years older than Carol, so she must be... Nineteen. Isn't that a trifle dangerous? Lives in London, shares a flat with a girlfriend. You're certain about that, only I... Well, of course I am. Oh, why, good heavens, do you think I'd go down there if... All right, just asking. There's no problem, then. No, and you're right. It would turn me up to trifle with her. <laughs> well, to wrap myself around her. But brace myself again. Hurriedly interrupting before it gets worse. I'm quite certain you'll enjoy yourself. You will, too. Richard's enormous fun. Well, no, don't start that again. It'll also give you a chance to see how the other half lives. They're quite well off. Yes, because Richard took over his father's business. Tony had to make his own way in the world. Reproof duly noted. I was being unfair, and I deserved to be an Aunt Sally. See you say when you could go down? Well, sometime this evening, if that's okay by you. Yes, I've arranged therapeutic treatment for tonight. Ask the Henderson's round. Oh, fine. That's about the only method of weaning Tony away from what, at best, is a sedative, taken in large doses, a downright depressive. Yeah, you'll have to translate. Well, it's only when we have visitors that we switch off the telly. <laughs> Break down the door. Uh, nobody home. Hold it. Over there, by the desk. Richard? Too late. The guy's dead. Richard! You mean here? Leo Stern, drug pusher, worked for the big wheel. You might answer when I call you. Well, I happen to be watching the silly old girl. Okay, Tracy, search the joint. He'll be here any moment now. Uh, uh, who? Hmm? Oh, David, of course. What is it? Yeah, uh, what? The program. Oh, it's uh, that uh, detective series. Which series? Yes. Uh, David, David who? Bliss. Beats me why you asked him down, old girl. Oh, I never for a second thought he'd come. Anyway, it's only for... Oh, oh that'll be him now. Oh, all right, I'll go. Not that you were likely to disturb yourself. Coming! Hello, Mrs. Massey. Hello, David. How 
lovely to see you. Come along in. I hope you don't mind me bringing Psyche. Not in the least. Isn't it an awful night? It's terrible. Good gracious, what an enormous suitcase. Anybody think you'd come for a week? I have. <laughs> yeah. You asked me for the week. I did? Yes. Oh, well, it can't be helped. Oh, it doesn't sound very welcoming, does it? Teasing, really. I tell you who will be glad to see you. Pauline. You can say hello to her first and then I'll take you into Richard. Oh, I thought Pauline lived in London. Well, she does mostly, but she, she's in here. Pauline, darling, look who's arrived. Pauline. Better leave it till later, David. That was her boyfriend with her. I thought it must be. He's not all that keen on television. I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, it's it. You're only young once, so make the most of it. Yes, well, they've certainly taken you at your word. I want to slip upstairs and shut the window in your room so you go in and talk to Richard. That door there, look. He's dying to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing him. Yes, come on, Psyche, you come with me. Headquarters, Tracy, and step on it. Hello, Mr. Massey. Narcotics have picked up LSD Sam. Hello, Mr. Massey. Mr. Massey? Good program. Hmm? Oh, yes, 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 not bad, yes. Oh, hello, old boy. I didn't hear you come in. Take, take, take the boo. Oh, thanks. Okay, Sam. Start talking. Uh, did you uh, have a good journey down? Oh, apart from the train being half an hour late. Oh, yes, I say that for them. They do run to time. <laughs> Mine was half an hour late. Oh, yes. Good show. Taking you for a nice little ride, Sam. How did you get up from the station? I took a taxi. Down to the morgue. Yes, you should have taken a taxi. <laughs> yeah, I did. Did what? I, I was just saying. I was just saying he should have taken a taxi, you see. We want you to identify the body, Sam. You don't mean you walked all the way out from the station? No. Just routine. Carrying that enormous suitcase, too. I came by taxi. Well, that's funny. There are usually plenty around. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to seem stubborn, but there were plenty around, and I did take one. Who put the finger on him, Sam? Yeah, I admit you in the car if I'd known you were going to walk. That's all right. The exercise did me good. <laughs> No, apart from the train being half an hour late. Oh, yes, I know. They are very punctual. I'm not by any chance interfering with your television. Oh, no, that's caused by something electrical next door. <laughs> Want to talk now, Sam? You might offer David a drink, darling. Hmm? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, he's right. Oh, I, I could do with a snifter myself. And the doctor said you were drinking too much. Ah, those days are over, old girl. Well, I haven't noticed the change. I know, but I've changed my doctor. <laughs> Well, what's your tipple, old boy? Uh, gin, whiskey, brandy, you name it, I've got it. Oh, I'd just as soon have something soft. I'll have to make quite a double to get over the shock. Well, I, I, I've got some orange juice in the fridge, if you'd like that, David. Yes, but don't you bother. Point me in the right direction and I'll get it myself. Oh, I wouldn't leave it letting you get it. You've done enough walking for today. No, I'm up now. So you won't talk, huh? Your kitchen through here? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good gracious, what on earth have you got in there? Oh, that's Tim. Short and tiny Tim. You'd never have believed he could be that big if you'd seen him as a puppy. Well, I'd never have believed any dog could be that big. Well, it's all right, he doesn't bite. Well, that size, a wag of the tail could be lethal. <laughs> Just go in and pat him. Well, what with? <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> no, no, Psyche, you stay in here. Tim will have you for supper. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I, I know. <laughs> I know all about that. But Tim's no ordinary dog. Look. Psyche, don't be silly. Psyche, get down. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Massey. Hmm? About what? My dog. Oh, you've got a dog with you, have you? <laughs> well, sitting on your lap. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, you're a nice little thing, aren't you? <laughs> okay, Tracy, back to headquarters. What sort of television have Anne and Tony got, David? Well, actually, they've just changed their portable set for an ordinary one with a 23-inch screen. Uh, what sort of uh, television have uh, Tony and Anne got, David? An ordinary one with a 23-inch screen. What size screen? 16 feet by 12 foot 6. <laughs> the man at the shop told us ours was the largest they made. Can you get all three channels on it? 36 altogether. 
including four from Japan. <laughs> well, three is enough for me. He's got solid gold controls, a built-in fully stocked bar, and when there's a break in transmission, a man pops up and plays the organ. <laughs> what will they think of next? A man pops up. <laughs> Well, we, we, we must have lots to talk about after all these years, and I feel that, well... You, you feel what? Well, it, it might be easier if we switched off the telly. Oh, yes, OK, then. It's, it's not up to much, anyway. OK, Tracy, see if you can... Well, now, old boy, what's new with you? Well, as a matter of fact, I've got a new job. Oh, so you tell me when we met. Something to do with export? Yes. But you haven't started it yet, have you? Well, no, no not, not yet, not, not properly. How's business with you, Mr. Massey? Don't ask, old boy. I never do. And Tony? Well, oh, pretty quiet. Yeah, same with me. The same all round, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes, same everywhere. <laughs> yes, well, there's only one thing left to be said now. Oh, what's that? Well, let's see what's on the other channel. <laughs> he'd left a note saying he'd gone for a walk with his dog. Heaven knows what time he gets up. Do you think you'll want a cooked breakfast? Mm -hmm. No, 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 just uh, coffee for me, thanks. If you stopped reading your newspaper, you'd hear what I was saying. Why do you think I'm reading it? You'll have to take David out somewhere today. Why can't you take him out? I fixed up to play golf. Morning. Oh, oh morning, morning, old boy. David. Is uh, Tiny Tim around? No, I've shut him in the kitchen. Psyche. <laughs> yes, all clear. I don't know whether you like a cooked breakfast, David, but Richard's only having coffee. Well, then I'll have the same. Yes, I have to watch my weight. You can't have been looking lately. You've thickened out a bit yourself since David first knew you, hasn't she, Anne? I've got a remarkably good figure for a woman of my age. I may be an inch or two bigger around the hip. Oh, come now, old girl. Well, you might come to my defence, David. You didn't come to mine. Well, I wouldn't have thought it applied either way around. It's not in my case either, eh? Well, not really, no. What do you mean, not really? Well, then I wouldn't have said you were all that round for a man of your fat. But... <laughs> um... But you're not all that fat for an alcoholic your size. <laughs> not all that big for a man with your pot. But for a man of your build. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm afraid I've got a habit of putting my foot in it. Don't apologise, old boy. Let's hear you have a crack at Celia. Well, I honestly don't think how old you are comes into it, Mrs. Massey. Meaning what? Well, you've got remarkably big hips for a woman of any age. <laughs> and your, your, your hips are a foot or two bigger than most. Your figure's better than most. Ah, yeah, there, old boy, you were right before. It's all those French patisseries she wolfs down. Now, listen, Richard, I don't want to lose my temper in front uh, of you. Yes, well, I, I just realised it's uh, time I was off. Uh, go for yourself, David. No. Oh, it's a pity I've taken you along. Well, see you this evening. Uh, Richard, you can't go till you've written out checks for that pile of bills. They're nearly all final demands. You worry too much, old girl. Well, if I didn't worry, nobody would. Sounds like a good idea. See you. <sighs> a complete Peter Pan, that's Richard's trouble. He's always spent money like water and won't face up to the fact that the spring's running dry. Well, you'll have to excuse me, David. I'm off to London to buy myself a few new clothes. I'm afraid I'll have to leave you in Pauline's hands for today. Oh, now, look, Mrs. Massey, I'm sure she doesn't want to be bothered with me. I'm sure she'll be delighted. She hasn't got anything on. I know, but even so. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't want me with my hands on her all day. But I want me on her hands. Well, ask her yourself when she comes down. Bye for now. Come on, Psyche. We're going for a walk. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, and now we're going for another. Pity we haven't got weight problems. Because I've got a feeling it's going to turn into a walking holiday. <laughs> Outside Weatherby's warehouse. Mind if I turn it off, Anne? Hmm? No, not a bit. Small van, license number XYE double one. I never imagined, never in all my life imagined, I'd find myself saying that, well, that... that you miss having David around. Incredibly enough. Absence making the heart grow fonder. With the backlog he had, it ought to have taken years. <laughs> Yet he's only been gone two days. Three counting today. Oh, so you're even counting the days. No, I know. i better fix up to see a psychiatrist. There must be something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm even beginning to hear things. Psyche barking. You heard it too? Yes. It doesn't make sense. He's not... Hello. Oh, hello, old man. <laughs> 
Psyche is excited to be back. And so am I. Oh, we're glad to have you back. Strange as it may seem, and it certainly does to me. <laughs> what prompted you to come back so early? Well, everything in general. Pauline in particular. Oh, she was down there then. Yes, but I avoided her for the first two days. And then last night, for want of something better to do, I, I, I agreed to take her to the cinema. Oh, and what happened? Well, nothing. Not in that sense. But believe me, through no fault of hers. Why? What did she do? Sat uncomfortably close to me. Oh, you can't blame the girl for that. He, there, there's never much room between the seats. I know, but you don't understand. You see, she... Um, she what? Sat close to me all the way down. You don't mean that That's she... exactly what I mean, and it couldn't be more embarrassing. <clears throat> I moved my legs away, of course, and then the trouble really started. But you don't mean Pauline complained. No, but the woman on the other side did. <laughs> Before I could stop her, she'd called the usherette. Oh, no, really? Yes, and I must say, Pauline helped terrifically. <laughs> Explain that it was all a mistake. Swore she'd never seen me before in her life. <laughs> well, as I said to the manager when he escorted me out. He escorted you out? <laughs> well, I could have had a police escort, only I didn't want to be ostentatious. <laughs> the whole thing, I said, has been a complete nightmare. I can understand that. Oh, dear, poor old lad. <laughs> Still put it down to experience. As a matter of interest, is she attractive? Who, Pauline? Mm. Oh, in an obvious sort of way, yes. She's quite a big girl. With everything to match, eh? Well, I didn't notice what she was wearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not what I meant, but never mind. Well, I haven't time to ask you what you meant. I'm due round at Tina's flat. Overdue, in fact. You've been in touch with her, then? I rang her from the masses this morning. Said I'd be round at seven, when the train was late. Did you tell her about last night? No, I didn't get around to it. Then don't. Ah, uh, no, no, look, Anne. You're always saying deceit's not my strong point, and you're right. It's no good me trying to lie about it. There's all the difference between lying and not opening your mouth. Now, there is with David. The first is difficult, the second impossible. <laughs> I know, and that's why I've made up my mind to tell Tina the whole story and to make a quick exit before Anne talks me out of it. <laughs> Goodbye. No, David, wait. Oh, I'm sure he's making a mistake, aren't you? No. You're not? He'd make thousands anyway. Oh, <laughs> We've got the sitting room to ourselves. Sheila's washing her hair, so let's make the most of it. Sofa? Yes, right up. Tina, before we go any further... We haven't even got to the sofa yet. <laughs> well, I have. And I'm right beside you. <laughs> ah, now then. There's something I've got to tell you about last night. Oh, dear. Is there? Anne's right. Lying's not my strong point, and that's what I've made up my mind to do. Lie to me? Yes. No, 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 to tell you the whole story. Uh, if you must. But as fast as you can. Sheila won't be all that long. Well, briefly into the point, then. I got fast with Pauline last night. Oh, hello. I'm off to my usual start. <laughs> now, calm down and try again. I took her to the cinema. Oh, did you indeed? Yes. And what happened? Everything. But believe me, through no fault of hers. Well, there's nothing. Uh, nothing like admitting it. What? That you made all the running. I did? Oh, no, 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 no. no. If I said that, I, I got it the wrong way round. You see, it all began because... Is it likely to be a long story? At this rate, yes. Then couldn't you kiss me first? Mm, my pleasure, darling Tina. Mm. <sighs> I say, why didn't I think of that? It all began... No, oh, because Pauline was sitting uncomfortably close to me. Well, she'd hardly be sitting three seats away. I know, but it wasn't just that she was sitting next to me. What then? Well, I was sitting close to her all the way down. Oh, shame on you. On me? Oh, no, 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 no. I've got that the wrong way around, too. Look, I'll start again. It's okay. I get the gist. Pauline was playing footy-footy. Well, yes. And then? Well, I moved my legs and started on the woman on the other side. <laughs> no, no. She did. Started on you? No, no, started to complain. Well, anyway, to cut a long story short... And not before time. The woman complained to the usherette. Pauline swore she'd never seen her before, and I ended up kissing the manager. No. <laughs> No, I thought not. Ended up by being escorted out. Oh, dear. <laughs> Poor David. What a nightmare for you. Well, I'm glad I told you about it. Uh, would you say she was attractive? Who, Pauline? Oh, in an obvious sort of way, yes. As, um, as attractive as me? Oh, good gracious. Comparing Pauline with you is like, well, comparing a tank to a Rolls Royce. <laughs> a Rolls can go quite fast. Oh, good heavens, yes. hundred miles an hour plus. And Sheila's still washing her hair. Well, what on earth's that got to do with... Oh, gosh, I see what you're getting at. <laughs> darling Tina, I have missed you. And I've missed you, darling. Mm. <sighs> good heavens. What? I was just thinking. It's a good job there's a 70 miles an hour speed limit. <laughs>
The first cooked breakfast I have had in four days. Why? What does Richard have? Just coffee. He's watching his weight and needs to. Bit late spread? No. Concentrated at the front. <laughs> but you know, Anne, you were right about him. He is gay. Not even vaguely. He's not? Where's the permanent fixed grin of a losing candidate listening to the mayor announcing the election results? But you were right about him in one respect. He really doesn't let things worry him. No? No, lets his wife worry about them instead. He's a complete Peter Pan, not to mention ostrich and something of a rabbit. How? Beats a breezy retreat the moment Celia says boo. Drinks too much as well, and you know why? Why? Because if he didn't, he'd be a complete nervous wreck. Now, that description hardly fits Tony, does it? Well, I'd never have recognised it as Richard. And the moral of our story? Better the dog you know. However crusty. <laughs> no, not you, Tony. Oh, I wouldn't have said he was. Nonsense, he's got a shocking temper. It's soon over and forgotten, though. Mm, spend a few days with Richard and you'll be only too glad to get back and have a row with him. Spend a few days with Richard and I wouldn't have long to wait. No, but seriously, compared with Richard... Tony's twice the man. I've always known that. Well, I've been wasting my breath, then. No, it's good for me to be reminded. It's done me good, too. I might even hang on to Tony a little longer. Well, I should. And if you ever think of getting rid of him, just think of... Morning, dear, you know, Oh, morning, Tony. David will pour out your coffee for you, darling. I'll go and get your... Oh... I haven't kissed you good morning, have I? There. The breakfast won't be long. Now what does she want? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, yes, she does. Something prompted her to kiss me. Yes, me. <laughs> Saying she doesn't realise how well off she is to have you for a husband. Oh, don't tell me she's been bemoaning her lot again. On the contrary, she's decided to hang on to you for a bit. Shall we start from the beginning? Well, it really began before I went away. Then let's begin there. Well, Anne had got the idea Richard was terribly gay. I've been known to be gay in my time. I know, that's what I said. And Anne said? When was that? <laughs> oh, well, oh, only as a joke, of course. Anyway, I've come back and rather destroyed his image. So she's decided to hang on to me even if I am neurotic. Well, whoever said you were? She did, remember, the day you left. Oh, worried a bit, perhaps. I don't know about neurotic. But I do know... Uh, no, 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 sugar, I'm cutting it out. Yeah, you, uh, you do know what? Well, what Anne said about you just now. Oh, what is that? Look, compared with Richard, you've got twice the paunch. <laughs> no, compared with him, you're twice as crusty. Oh, oh for heaven's sake. So she has been bemoaning her lot. No, 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 I got it all wrong. What did she say, But by comparison, you're twice the moaner. No, no, twice the rabbit. Uh, the nervous, twice the man. Don't say another word. Not another word. Understand? I understand why, too. You do? A familiar phrase, but it could have been specially coined for me. Meaning? Least said, soonest mended. That was A Life of Bliss with George Cole as David Bliss, Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as Tony Fellows, Muriel Pablo as Tina Holiday, and Percy Edwards as Psyche. Richard was played by Victor Lucas, Celia by Pauline Letts, and the voices on television by John Graham. A Life of Bliss is written by Godfrey Harrison and produced by Edward Taylor. <laughs>